Hello and welcome to another JavaScript SEO Q&A, or office hours as we used to call them. Um, my name is Martin Schmidt. I am a developer advocate on the search relations team at Google. And my speciality is crawling and indexing and rendering, specifically all the topics around JavaScript. And that's what we're here for today. Uh, a bunch of people found their way into this uh, lovely recording. And um, a bunch of people of you have asked questions on YouTube. So let's go over the YouTube questions first and then open the questions for the audience as well. Deep T is asking, Ajax and Lazy Load was introduced to improve the page speed and load content as needed. However, the SEO fetch requirement is to load the page content beforehand. In React-based SPA applications or single page applications uh, or progressive web applications, what would be the Google recommendation? Pre-rendering or dynamic rendering and why? How uh, to approach one over the other without violating Google code of ethics for SEO. So first things first, uh, yes, lazy loading uh, is a great introduction uh, in terms of loading content only when the user potentially sees it. Um, and you can do that uh, in a React single page, in any single page application, in any uh, progressive web app in any website um, without violating uh, Google guidelines or without running into problems. We actually do have a guide on developers.google.com slash search that explains how to do this properly. Um, the recommended way in general is for images and iframes to use the loading equals lazy. Um, for uh, for uh, anything else, you can use the intersection observer. You should still have some sort of links and URLs that actually make these paginatable so that you get pages of content. That's a better way of doing that. Um, you can use pre-rendering, which means like, or pre-rendering or server-side rendering, actually, which means basically creating the HTML content and then basically giving that to, to your users as well. That might make things a little faster. It might not, depending a little bit on your content and the amount of content as well. Dynamic rendering, I would, in general, not recommend if you can somehow avoid it, because it is a workaround. With dynamic rendering, what I mean by that is um, if you are rendering the page and then serving that to bots versus what you give to users, that is generally not a violation of the cloaking uh, guideline. But it still means that you are creating additional technical infrastructure that can usually fail at some point. It is harder to test these things. It just adds a lot of complexity for not that much value unless you really, really can't fix what you're building. If you're building something from scratch or something new, then I would definitely recommend looking into server-side rendering um, just because it gives your users benefits too to have the content in the HTML and the initial HTML. Uh, browsers are really fast at parsing that as it comes in versus uh, JavaScript-generated content. You basically have to wait until the JavaScript has downloaded, has executed, and then only then can the browser show things. So. Mm. Your mileage might vary. And for lazy loading or infinite loading in specific, uh, that is not really the main concern here, because how much of the content would you put into this initial HTML anyway? We recommend having uh, a bit of JavaScript that does this infinite stream of content uh, using an intersection observer, and then also providing some sort of URL uh, structure that adds pagination, or basically like slash one, slash two, or slash question mark page equals one, question mark page equals two, uh, and putting that into your sitemaps uh, in order to make sure that um, that this is indexable and visible, because there are limitations to what intersection of servers can do. Marco is asking, in a page where some of the content is geo or user dependent and loaded via JavaScript, how does it impact in-linking and weight propagation? That's a very ranking-specific question, so I'd rather not answer that part, but in general, um, if it's geo or user dependent, geographically, most of the visits from Googlebot come from the US. So it's likely that it's not going to load uh, some of the content. If it's user dependent, um, that usually means it's customization or personalization that is behind the login. Googlebot won't be logged in, so it will behave like a user that has never visited your site before. Um, so that's what we'll, we'll be seeing. Edward is asking a question, what suggestions does Google Search Console have for in identifying and addressing pages with excessive JavaScript? Um, in general, Google Search Console has the Core Web Vitals report that will tell you which pages are slow, and that those are the ones that you want to specifically look into. Um, 
if it's not on there, then that might mean that we don't have enough field data. Uh, I would probably try to have a look at PageView Insights or Lighthouse uh, to find pages where there is excessive JavaScript used. Ricardo is asking a question. Uh, Hi, Martin. I recently came across a site that basically, if JavaScript is disabled on the browser, it just shows a blank page with no content. And this is a very traditional e-commerce site, so nothing that makes the use of JavaScript mandatory and indispensable. The site is normally indexed by Google. At the moment, I have not detected any rendering problems, so there are no worries. Mine is just a thought on how a really good solution can be to create a site that depends 100% percent on JavaScript rendering, both from the SEO point of view and from the user experience point of view. From the SEO point of view, um, at least for Google Search, I can't really answer for other search engines. Uh, at least for Google Search, it's not that much of a problem. Um, from the user experience point of view, uh, it is more brittle. Like, there might be some people are searching with certain add-ons um, that might consider, like, oh, this JavaScript shouldn't load, or first load of a page, we don't load the JavaScript. And then they don't see anything, and then they just move on to another site. Um, I think using JavaScript for something where you don't have to use JavaScript, and you're implying like this is a traditional e-commerce kind of thing, and then I, I would question why it doesn't show content without JavaScript. So I, I feel like this is the kind of JavaScript usage that I don't necessarily encourage. Um, I would say pages that don't rely on JavaScript are usually more solid, more stable, and usually faster. Um, Again, your mileage might vary, but I would not advise on doing that uh, where you show no content whatsoever if JavaScript is disabled, unless you have a really, really good reason. And oh, we build it that way is not really a good reason, in my opinion. Good question. Valen is asking, or Valen Corporation is asking a question, um, testing the crawlability of my company's website, which is having its CMS upgraded to a new version. But the upgrade will mean that the site will be a single page application running Angular JS 1.8. That's a really old Angular version, I think. I am emu emulating Googlebot smartphone and dev tools and using the mobile friendly testing tool to test pages. But sometimes the mobile friendly testing tool renders less content for a specific page than I am uh, seeing in the dev tools Googlebot emulation. Why does this happen? And which testing tool should I trust in this situation? Um, definitely trust the mobile friendly test more. The, so here's what's what's going on. If you set your dev tools to Googlebot smartphone, the only thing that changes is the user agent, which is a string that is being sent in every HTTP request that you're making. It still uses your regular Chrome settings. Like nothing has changed, nothing is different. Googlebot, however, does work differently. For instance, Googlebot does honor robots.txt, whereas your developer tools in Chrome do not. So I, that's one of the many, many things that are different. Um, so I would not trust that too much, to be honest. It's a very rudimentary, very, very simple test uh, to do this in DevTools. Um, the mobile-friendly test, however, might also not necessarily show you the reality at all times. Like, there's this dreaded other error. And I have spoken about this a lot of times. So the big problem there, or the, big, the challenge here is, the indexing infrastructure is built for batch processing, for basically background processing. So we have a lot of time until we actually can crawl the resources of your page, and we can retry individual resources multiple times before we progress in indexing. That can take minutes to hours. Um, when you are using the mobile friendly test, we can't really let you wait for an hour until you see a result, right? So we have to like draw a line somewhere and say, like, after a couple of minutes, if we haven't crawled it yet because we don't have a crawler available, then we'll just move on. And then you see like other error, because this is not really an error. This is a, an implementation detail of the way that the testing tool is implemented. But the testing tool uses the actual Googlebot infrastructure and the actual rendering infrastructure that we are using as well. So what you see there is more likely what we'll be seeing when we're actually indexing. I'm a little worried about AngularJS 1.8, because that is really, really old technology. And I would recommend not necessarily using that, because I feel that like Angular has matured a lot in the last couple of years. Uh, I think they're at a version 9 now. So um, yeah, I'm not, not super sure about that technology choice. But 
in general, an SPA, even running an old version of Angular, should be fine if you test it thoroughly in Search Console as well as Mobile Friendly Test and the other testing tools. Oh, my. I actually can't read Arabic, so I don't know what's your name. But there is a question about you know, someone using WP Rocket to speed up their website. Um, apparently, the site works correctly and quickly, and the PageSpeed Insights score increases, but the traffic drops on the Search Console and Google Analytics. When they deactivated WP Rocket, traffic increased back again. I don't know. So. I don't know uh, WP Rocket or WordPress Rocket. Um, I don't know exactly what it does. But if traffic drops, I would wonder if also pages drop out of the index. And then that would probably be because the way that it makes things faster is by deferring content to a later point where we might actually miss it. So it sounds like it makes things more brittle, uh, even though it makes things faster. WordPress sites often benefit from uh, reviewing the themes very, very thoroughly, because themes often load a lot of stuff that you don't really need. Um, so I, I would double check if you can uh, figure out why the theme is slow in the first place instead of in a, using a Band-Aid like WP Rocket. Manoj or Manoj uh, is asking about the cache operator that doesn't really work for JavaScript websites, too. Uh, is there an alternative to see the Google Cache page? Yes, in Google Search Console, you can see the index page. So you use the URL inspection tool, put in the URL that you care about, the page URL that you care about, and then say, like, view crawled site. And there you see the rendered HTML that we're actually indexing. I have a WordPress site. Should I do JavaScript SEO? Nancy? No. Nah. No, nah. normally you don't have to. Uh, yeah, and that's it for the questions uh, that touch on JavaScript SEO from YouTube. I'll reload the page one more time to make sure that we're not missing out on anything here. Yeah, that's it. And with that, I open questions to the audience. There, yeah, excellent. I was about to say there's a raise hand feature here in Google Meets. Uh, Paramount has already raised their hand. You can also use the chat to ask questions too, and then I'll go through these questions. All right, in that case, Pramod, what's the question? Yeah, hi, Martin. So uh, I have a very generic question. Uh, is there any added advantage of using React or Angular or any other JavaScript framework in terms of SEO? Or Google will treat uh, this uh, framework with the conventional frameworks is the same, or is yeah. any different? Than no, we, we don't care. All the same. OK. So I think uh, in my current companies, some of the pages are on React.js, and some of the pages are on the WordPress or other platforms. Mm -hmm. So uh, should we have to migrate all into one or? No. Not for SEO purposes. Like For SEO, it doesn't matter. OK. OK. Thank you. You're welcome. Happy to help. Any other questions? Again, you can use the raise hand feature, or you can use the chat as well. Just let me know. All right. There are no further questions. Are there questions? Are there questions? I hear noise coming from Suresh. OK. If there are no further questions, then I'd like to say thank you so much, everyone, for joining. Thanks for everyone watching the recording here afterwards. Stay safe, stay healthy, have a great time, and continue building cool things on the web. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Martin. <laughs>